Here I'm going to show you how to use the indirect function in Excel. It's a really cool function that's going to allow you to make much more powerful formulas with, I guess you could say, dynamic cell and range references. So you can do all sorts of cool things. We'll finish on this awesome example here where I can, from a drop-down menu, click a different cell, say region 2. All of these values update to show me the values for region 2. Same for region 3 or region 1, whatever I want all using the indirect function. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. Okay, so let us begin with simple examples up at the top here. And let's start with the definition they have for indirect. What is it? Returns the reference specified by a text string. Okay, so in layman's terms, the indirect function allows you to feed it a cell reference as text. So we can create the cell reference within the indirect function. And then it is just as if we had directly input that cell reference or range reference into the cell. Sounds a little confusing right now, so let's jump straight into it. So let me delete these dudes. Let's start off. Okay, we have stuff over here, just text. Now, let's say we want to have a formula, okay? Anything with an equal sign is a formula. Let's say I type A2 as a regular formula like this. What's going to be output? A2. So A2 just like that. However, what if I do the same thing in the indirect function? So I am feeding it a range reference as a text string. Stuff. It is exactly the same as if we had done this equal sign and selected this cell equals A2. It is exactly the same as that. So indirect allows us to dynamically create this dude, this cell reference or the range reference. We'll use named references at the end. And then I can feed it to whatever formula I want to put this in. So that's where it gets really cool. Let's go to the next example. All right, delete these dudes. Okay, so here let's just type the reference in the cell. Let's say A3. Okay. Now say I want to equal A3, it just equals what was in the cell. And if I use it with indirect, reference this cell, A3, we get what was in cell A3. And I could even just reference this cell over here. It wouldn't matter. Equals indirect, reference this cell, which is a formula, which references this cell. And it still works. All right, now let's make it a little more interesting. Okay, so let's craft the range reference. First, we'll do it as a formula, equals A and 4. The and, or the ampersand, is the concatenation uh, symbol, I guess. It's what allows you to combine multiple elements within a cell. You could use the concat function, but no one uses that. So equals a in quotation marks because it's text. The number is not text, so no quotes. And now we have constructed a4. But it's not a range reference, just a formula. So it just outputs text. So let us do the same thing with this. Equals indirect. Now a ampersand 4. Oh, no quote. OK. So just like that. Enter, and there we go. Now, the first time that you do this like this, since it is a date, it'll probably be in general format, so it'll look like that. Do not worry about that. That's how dates look in Excel, a properly formatted date and time, at least. So you can just select it, go to the Home tab, choose the format for it, or if you want it to be the exact same format as the cell with the date, uh, real simple, Control-C, go over to the right, Alt-E-S-T, Enter. alt e S, T, enter. So, really cool little shortcut. All paste special shortcuts are awesome, by the way. <laughs> now, let's go down here to a named range. 
I'm going to go ahead and delete this named range real quick. Formulas, name manager. OK, bye bye. Yes, I want to delete it. OK, so here we have a cell, just some regular data. Let's go ahead and give it a name. So just select it, go up to the name box, my thing, hit enter. There are some rules for the names, mainly just don't put any spaces or weird characters in there. Now, let's go over here. Let us reference equals my thing. OK. Perfect. It references that cell. But what if we want the named range to be dynamic? We want this dude to be able to change. So we want to put it in this cell over here. So my thing. No equal sign, just my thing. Now let's reference that guy here. So we just get the text just like that. But as you can imagine, with indirect reference the cell, doesn't matter which one we reference here, close parentheses, hit enter, it references this text here and evaluates it as a range. Named range goes to A5, so we get I am a cell. It's really, really cool. And this is what's going to allow us to do some really powerful things. You can do lots of stuff with data validation as it relates to this with named ranges, all sorts of things. And here, I don't have time to cover everything. What I'm going to leave you with is one example that I think is more useful that builds on this. It's the very next step. So down here, we have a table of sales data, and we have three regions. And what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've named the data for each, the range for each region. So if we go up here to the name box, click the drop down arrow, click region one, it highlights that range, region two, and region three. Nice, neat, and awesome. Now, what I've got over here are some values, min, max, average, and total. And I want those values to be applied to the selected region. So here, what I have is just a very simple drop-down menu. Nothing too special, simple drop-down menu with the regions, one, two, and three. Now these regions are spelled exactly the same as these named ranges. So I select the named range, go up here, you can see region three, spelled exactly the same down here. You need to have the exact same spellings. Now, you actually don't need to. You can do more sophisticated things to make it so that the name will apply even if it's not spelled correctly, but that's way beyond this tutorial, although not technically that difficult to do. And all I did for the drop down menu, pretty cool, Alt DL, select the cell, Alt DL, or Data Tab, Data Validation. So, Data Tab, da where are you? Data Validation, right there. Then you go to Settings, Allow, List. Just type in three values separated by a comma, region one, region two, region three. Okie dokie. Now, let's go region one. You can see how it changes, so cool. Let's check out the formulas. So for the min, what do we do for the min formula? Well, we just have the min function. And then we need to give the min function a range reference. So we use the indirect function to reference this cell right here. And just as the previous example in row five showed you, this text right here is pulled into indirect and then is evaluated as if it was a range reference that you directly typed into the min function. So indirect is going to Let's select it, hit F9, and see what happens. So F9 evaluates the section of the formula you have selected in cell. OK, so what it did there is actually it just evaluated the entire range. <laughs> so maybe back up one. All you can see is that it works as if you typed region one in here, which is the same as the named range, which is everything I just said. But what I want to do then is just show you. It's the same thing as if I had just typed region one, you can see it filling in there for the named ranges, just like that. But now, since I hard-coded it, you'll see the eight will not change. So undo that, undo that. Okay, so that's a very useful way, and we just did it for the rest of the formulas. Max formula, 
max function, the average function, and the sum function. So indirect just serves as a feeder. It feeds the correct range reference. Now there are a lot more things you can do with indirect, but they all build upon these core principles. And there is another argument in the indirect function that I did not cover in this tutorial because most of you aren't going to need it or use it, and I think it can confuse you more than it can help you at this point. That is the type of range references that you use. That's the second argument. Here it's A1, it's optional. You can use R1, C1 style range references. Almost nobody uses those within the worksheet in Excel, and if they do, I, I don't know, just steal their stapler and throw it out the window or something because it's just a real pain and it is almost never necessary. So I'm not covering R1C1 style cell references in this tutorial. But as far as the indirect function is concerned, this is the building block for pretty much everything you're going to do with it. Just remember, whatever you feed into the indirect function is going to be evaluated as a cell or a range reference. And the power of it is when you combine it with other functions. So you can change the reference for the other function. So that's all for this tutorial, and I hope you found it helpful. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.